This interview is being conducted for the Muncie LGBTQ plus history project. My name is Alec Johnson. I use he, him pronouns. We are recording at 547 on April 10th, 2020 via Skype. Uh, thank you, Alexis, for agreeing to be a part of the project and contributing to it. Um, so I'm going to ask you, what are your pronouns and how old are you? Uh, my pronouns are her and she, and I am currently 20 years old. All right. So as you know, we're we're interested in the history of the LGBTQ plus community in Muncie. So with that being said, how do you personally identify? Uh, I, I identify as a pansexual. All right. And uh, can you kind of elaborate on what that is for people who might not know? Um, pansexual is basically you like someone regardless of their gender. It's pretty similar to being bisexual. I honestly don't know the difference, but I think pansexual suits me better than bisexual. So would you say that it's more inclusive then than something like bisexual? Um, I mean, I don't know. I guess so. A lot, there's a lot of arguments in the community that say that pansexual is more inclusive than bisexual because bisexual is just like two genders. So maybe, yeah, there is because pan means all, so... It gives open to all the genders that are out there. Um, so is this something that you've always identified as, or when did this start? Um, I identified, I have identified as pansexual since sixth grade, sixth, sixth, yeah, sixth grade, which is around like 2011. So what so was that, ex okay. what was that experience uh, like for you coming out, especially at like such a young age? Um, I mean, my coming out story is kind of, it's not as dramatic as some people. I kind of, I started talking to this girl. I realized, hey, I like her. So for a while, I did think I was like a lesbian, but then I also like guys at the same time. So said I was pansexual. And coming out for me wasn't really that stressful since my mom was kind of on the more liberal side. So it was kind of like, hey, I have a girlfriend. And she was just like, cool. Was all your family like that, or was it more of just, like, your mom? It was just my mom. Some of my family doesn't even know that I like girls because they're kind of on the Christian side, and they're kind of homophobic, so i rather them not know since I'm not really currently dating a girl, so. All right, and uh, do you think you would ever come out to them one day, though? Um, yeah, if it came up in conversation, but I don't think I'd just be like, hey, I like girls because... I don't know. I know it's start drama in my family, and I kind of just want to keep them close for now since they're, most of the family I haven't told you are kind of old. So I'd rather just be on good terms with them. So would you say that's like an ongoing experience for you that you'll continually come out, but just when the time is right? Yeah, pretty much. Um, so currently you have a boyfriend, so people might assume that you're heterosexual. Is that something that occurs sometimes um yeah it occurs like my own boyfriend thought didn't know that I was pan until I told him but it doesn't really bother me if people think I'm hetero honestly so if they try to call me hetero I'll correct them that's pretty much the extent of it for me all right so um the other part of this is uh your life in Muncie so my first question is have you always lived in Muncie Yep, born and raised in Muncie, Indiana. And that was until you got to college, correct? Was uh, the first time you were outside of Muncie? Pretty much, yeah. That was the first time I actually lived somewhere that wasn't Muncie. Um, can you tell me a little about a little bit about the LGBTQ plus community in Muncie? Is it something that you have any knowledge of to begin with? Or what's your experience with it? Um, my experience with the LGBT community and Muncie is kind of limited to my high school years since I was in like a club. It was called, um, I believe, Gay Straight Alliance. It's been a couple years. And it's basically, it was just a club where they talked about issues in, about the LGBTQ community and talking about how um, it's basically just giving more information to people. So I met a lot of people who were also part of the community, which was nice. So was that an important experience to you? Was it helpful to you at all? I think it was important. I think it was, 
it was really important actually because it's not it's kind of nice to be around people who are in the same community as you and have the same like feeling it's just like a kind of camaraderie it was nice all right and uh so you're you consider yourself a part of the once the lgbt community then do you feel like you're well connected with the other people in the community um or or do you have a more um short kind of uh, smaller knit circle of people uh for me it's kind of more of a knit circle it's more like my close friends from high school but other than that i don't really I don't really know that many people in, in Muncie that are part of the LGBTQ family or church community outside of my friends and family. Um, and did you know of any other resources that uh, Muncie had in regards to LGBTQ plus people? Uh, honestly, I do not. Is it, have you not like outwardly searched for it? Yeah, I haven't really searched for it because, as I've mentioned before, being the LGBT community for me was more kind of like a low key thing. Like, I was proud of being part of it, but it wasn't like I'm not like super into it. All right. Um, yeah. Now, do you think these spaces do exist then uh, for people, or do you think Muncie kind of doesn't have a lot of resources in the first place? I think Muncie, it's, it's, I mean, they could be better, but everyone could be better. I think Muncie does it fairly well since the high school has the Gay Straight Alliance. And then I'm sure Ball State has plenty of clubs dealing with LGBTQ community. And there are some bars downtown that are like exclusively for people part of the community. All right. And so do you wish Muncie had more than it currently does? Or do you think you're satisfied with what it has? I think it'd be nice if there was more, just to kind of give people, because like Muncie can be kind of conservative, so I think if there was more like public events, it would help a lot with people on Muncie, like be more accepting of the community. All right. Now, have you ever thought about like, you're talking, how you bring it up is Muncie, you know, it doesn't have a lot, but does have resources available. Have there other, have there been any other like, um, places that you've thought about living because of how more accepting they are or the more resources they have available? Um, I mean, a little bit. More like, I would say like when I was looking for colleges, I did kind of pay attention to if they were, had like a pretty good LGBTQ community, like Bloomington. Bloomington has a pretty, has pretty good. There's plenty of clubs in this, and they even have like it's like a cultural center for LGBTQ people, which really attracted me to the college. Have you um, been at all involved in the community there or attended any events? The most I attended, sadly, was just Welcome Week because I'm kind of busy with my other schoolwork. But they do make a point to like try and reach out to everyone, which I think is really nice. All right. Um, well, continuing along the educational lines, how was, in general, your education experience in Muncie? My education was pretty great. I graduated with an associate's degree, so when I came to IU Bloomington, I pretty much could just jump right into my major classes, which was a lot of fun. I didn't have to take, like, some freshman English class that I would have hated. So you'd say school went pretty well for you then? Yeah. Was this always, or was this more of a, as you got older, school got better for you? Or were you, like, always well adapted for school and had a generally good experience? Um, I mean, it's, it's more like I kind of grew into it, because, like, in elementary school, I was more of, like, an average student. I got some, I got usually got A's and B's, and then in middle school, I had a rough time in seventh grade and I went I think my GPA like plummeted down to 2.0 but then starting in eighth grade I started taking my education more seriously and and from eighth grade to graduating high school I managed to keep all A's so I kind of grew into my education I guess so it sounds like for you personally um being a good student uh, being very knowledgeable is an important aspect of your life, correct? Yeah. 
All right. Um, so um, how would you describe how LGBTQ plus community people, especially those who are uh, out, were treated while you were in school? Um, I honestly, I honestly can't recall anyone being bullied for being in part of the community. I think pretty much everyone was pretty accepting, like the teachers always were there. So when, if like a kid needed some help or something, but I don't recall any explicit bullying of people who were part of the community. So you don't recall like any incidences at all of people being bullied? No. Uh, now, uh, so this, so what you mean is they probably weren't bullied outwardly, but do you think like maybe behind people's backs, people might have said negative things about people in the community? Honestly, probably. Like in like private group chats, I'm sure people probably said homophobic stuff about people in the community just because it's the internet and you're kind of anonymous in the internet and you won't get like, I guess, in trouble for talking really bad about the LGBTQ community. So you bring up the internet, and I think that's a really interesting point because uh, as we've gotten older, social media has become a lot more prominent in our lives. So do you think uh, that at all played a role in people becoming more accepting of LGBTQ plus communities? Mm, I, yeah, I really think so because with the internet, people could have more, they're, they can interact with more people than just the people around them. So they can see people from all walks of life and they become more, um, I guess, accepting of people of different cultures and lifestyles and everything. Um, did the internet play a role in your experience at all? Um, I'm going to say yeah, because that's how I met my first girlfriend. And so if I didn't have the internet, it probably would have taken me longer to figure out, oh, I like girls. I'm not completely straight. So you kind of found this, you found the internet helpful then to help you. Yeah. Um, are there any like particular online communities that uh, you were involved in? Um, in middle school, I was really involved in Tumblr. They had, Tumblr has a very large LBTQ community. Um, but that's, pretty much the only community I was on on the internet. Um, can you explain what Tumblr is? Um, Tumblr is like a, it's a blogging platform. So people like share their ideas. And if you agree with someone's post, you reblog it to your profiles and then your followers can see it and you can discuss things with people on the site. It's kind of just, it's like a forum website almost, but like it's like almost exclusively pictures. But you can have text posts too. All right. Um, moving back to your educational experience, um, would you say that uh, moving to Bloomington has had any effect on you or any effect on your um, identity at all? Or would you say that it kind of just more reaffirms you? Um, I would say it kind of changed my identity because before coming to Bloomington, I did identify as asexual. But then I met my boyfriend and I realized, oh, I probably wasn't asexual. I was probably just like a teenager who hadn't really had any sexual thoughts yet. Um, and can you elaborate on what asexuality is, please? Um, asexuality is you don't really have an interest in sex. So you kind of it's kind of like your sex drive is non-existent. And yeah, that's pretty much you just don't want to have sex with other people. All right, and uh, how might that differ from, let's say, a romanticism? Um, being a romantic is more like it's more like you don't really feel any romantic feelings towards anyone. Like, so you wouldn't like you could. I guess you could have a partner and it'd be platonic, and you could have sex with that partner, but you wouldn't really love them per se. They'd be more like a friends with benefits type thing. All right. Um... So you would say your identity is changed. Do you see your identity changing in the future? Or do you believe that right now you have it figured out? 
I mean, honestly, it'll probably change in the future because I also thought I had it figured out in 12th grade year. And then I came to college and I met my boyfriend and I realized, wow, I'm not. And it's part, and that's because your identity, your sexual identity is kind of fluid and it changes as life goes on because you don't got to be stuck in one mold for the rest of your life. You can always change. So would you say then that overall college has been a good experience for you and helping you establish your identity as it is right now? Yeah, college has been pretty great for me socially, not academically, but socially. <laughs> and with my sexuality, it has been great. All right. Um, so moving past your education, I want to talk a little bit about your family. Can you just describe the basics of your family to me? The basics? Um, I come from a single parent home. My mother raised me and my three other siblings. Um, I don't really I don't really talk to my dad at all. I have like so many more siblings from him that I don't even talk to. So basically, my family is just me, my mom, my twin, and my two brothers. Um, would you say that you have a close relationship to your brothers and sisters and your mom? Um, I definitely have a close relationship with my mom and my sister. My younger brother, I kind of have a relationship, but he's in middle school, so he's kind of ornery. And then my older brother, I have virtually no relationship with. Um. So, do you think growing up in a single parent household has had any effect on you in particular? Mm, I mean, probably a little bit. I'm not really good around male authority figures because I didn't grow with a dad, but I would say, yeah. I think growing up with a single parent home made me realize that not everything in the world is ever going to work out. And that sometimes you're going to have hardships, but those hardships, you'll get over if you do hard work. Do you think having a strong uh, female role model at all has affected you since you come from a single parent household? I mean, probably, yeah. I'm like a feminist. Not, not like a feminist who goes out and advocates a lot because I'm more of kind of a mellow feminist who will speak out if I see people like trying to, I guess make women seem like they're lower than men. Um, do you think the feminism has all played a role into the acceptance of LGBTQ plus community people? Yeah. And I mean, they're kind of connected, aren't they? Since in the LGBT community, you have, you have trans women, you have lesbians, and then, yeah. I feel like they have to be connected since there are in, there are females in the community. All right. Um, so you have a sister who's also yep. your twin. Yep. Uh, do you think having a twin who is also not completely straight, has that made the experience easy for you, especially in the earlier stages? Uh, yeah, probably for sure. Because if my sister, my sister wasn't gay, it probably would be kind of, be kind of as a twin be kind of like ostracizing because then I couldn't really relate to my sister as well as I had been before I found out that I was gay so it was pretty nice that she was also part of the community and did she come out around the same time as you if I recall yeah I think she did um can you tell me a little bit about like the experience of coming out to each other um I mean, the experience, it's pretty much the same experience as with my mom. I basically was just like, hey, I have a girlfriend, and she was, like, cool. And that was pretty much the extent of coming out to each other. So you guys were pretty much automatically accepting of each other. Yeah, and it's probably just because we were twins and we are just kind of, you know, stuck to the hip. All right. Um, so I know that your grandpa is heavily involved in the church community, has this, uh, and you have also some religious upbringings, not strong religious upbringings, but uh, religious upbringings nonetheless. Would you say this, this at all affected you or your ideas of the LGBTQ plus community? Um, I don't think it ever affected my ideas about the community because when I was in church, we didn't really talk about like gay people. It was more like talking about being 
kind and good to others and giving the charity and stuff. It was really, it was never like bashing on gay people. So you'd say you have a pretty overall positive experience then? Yeah, I have a positive experience with religion personally, but I, I do know there's some people out there who will use religion as a means to put down people in the community. Um, and how long did you, I guess, be involved in the church community? Uh, I regularly went to church every Sunday, and or every other Sunday, really, until like probably my seventh grade year of middle school. And was uh, the community at all talked about by, let's say, your grandparents or any other people you knew that were in the church community? No. Not while I was attending church anyways. I found out like when I was in, first time I heard my grandpa talk about it was in my junior year of high school. So it's not really a hot topic. uh, What was his opinions on the matter? Um, He he does not see gay people in a very favorable light. Um, Has this at all affected your relationship with him? Um, Not really. I mean, it kind of sours it, but he's also my grandpa, and he's done so much for me that I I don't know. I Personally, I can't just throw away my relationship with him just because he said that. Um, so would you say that there are people in your lives who might not be accepting, but you still accept them? Yeah, because I love them. And like I've said before, they took care of me when I was younger and my mom couldn't. So they're kind of like my immediate family. Okay, so um, is, how does, in general, your family feel about the community, or is it more, like, fragmented in what people think about it? Um, well, my mom, for sure, is very positive about it. She's even, in the more recent, more recently, she's even talked about herself being, like, bisexual and liking women, so she's somewhat part of the community, um, but the rest of my family don't, don't really talk about it, like, some of my other family are part of the LGBT community, and, and of course they're accepting of it. And then it's really only the religious side of my family who are kind of iffy on the subject. Now, is this all on your mom's side of the family? Um, it's mostly my mom's side. Since my dad wasn't around, I don't really know my dad's side. But like my grandpa, who I was talking about earlier, he's on my dad's side. And that's pretty much the extent of my relationship with that side of the family. And have these views that your family has held have any effect on you personally? Um, not really. I'm I'm not easily swayed by the opinions of my fa- of my family, and I think it's partly due to the internet. So you think the internet has kind of opened your eyes into a lot more viewpoints? Yeah, because, like, without the internet, I just have my family viewpoints be like, okay, yeah, that sounds legit. But with the internet, I can look at different viewpoints and then see what I agree with. And has college at all affected these viewpoints? Um, no, not, not really, because the college I go to is very liberal, so they already have a positive view on the LGBTQ community. So they kind of reaffirmed what you already believed? Yeah, pretty much. All right. Um, is there anything else you wanted to talk about that I didn't maybe didn't bring up at all? Um, not really. I think we covered everything. <laughs> all right. Well, thank you for your time. Mm-hmm. Thank you for agreeing to contribute to the project. Um, and I'll talk to you later. Thank you. Talk to you later.